Hey everybody, it's Derek here. We're gonna go through the week's news for March 15th to the 21st. Anyway, we'll get into it. So uh, Square Enix had a Square Enix Presents. It was kind of like a Nintendo Direct style um, digital showcase thing where they showed off a couple of the games that are coming out this year. The vast majority of them were things we already knew, but um, yeah, some new stuff. So Life is Strange 3 got a trailer war. Um, it's got uh, some returning characters from Life is Strange 2. I don't know why they had a weird smash cut at the start of that. Anyway, um, you're playing a Asian American woman coming back to a small town. Or not coming back to a small town. But she finds her brother as she used to be in the foster system or some shit. I don't know. To be honest, I don't follow Life is Strange that much. But uh, the brother she just met uh, dies under mysterious circumstances, and like the general thrust of the game is to maybe figure out something weird was happening there. And also, she has empathy superpowers or something. Here was me thinking empathy was just a regular thing human beings do, but apparently it's a superpower. Anyway, uh, Life is Strange will be out uh, September tenth on <laughs> Stadia. <laughs> will Stadia even still be there on September tenth? I don't know but on pretty much everything else except Switch. Um, and it will not be episodic. It will be a full release all on its own. Um, also, the other two Life is Strange games are getting uh, remasters as well. So if you haven't jumped into the series like myself, consider it, maybe? I don't know. Life is Strange remasters, yes. Um, Project Athia got a title change. It is now called Forspoken. Um, and there was a bit more information about the game. It appears to be modern day woman ends up in a fantastic world of dragons and some shit. Um, it was introduced by the person who will be playing the main character. And can we see gameplay? This is possibly gameplay, more of a cutscene. But she's like, that's a fucking dragon, what the fuck? Um, they changed the title. All right, here we go. So this is kind of why I'm interested in it, because look at that traversal. That's some that's some good shit. That is that looks fun and I wanna play it. So when's that coming out? No idea. <laughs> no no idea. Twenty twenty two at some point. Who knows? Outriders got uh, a bit more of a demo to kinda of, or not demo. Um well I mean there is an Outriders demo, but it got a trailer to kind of show off a bit more of the game and kind of confirm that yes, it's gonna to come to Xbox Game Pass. If you've already pre-ordered it, maybe get in touch with Square Enix to let them know so you can get a refund if you're already on Game Pass. Um, not much more to say about Outriders, really. There's a de free demo on all those platforms. Just give it a shot. But on Wonderland had a trailer. Um, this is kind of like a cooperative, um, kind of old-school platformer. But it looks kind of crap. <laughs> I don't know. Does anyone else think it doesn't look that great? Um, it did have a demo earlier in the year. And there was a lot of feedback from players playing it basically to say it handles kind of weird. Uh, it's strangely slow and the characters are weirdly unresponsive. Um, and I can kind of see that just from the way they move. It doesn't, it doesn't look fun despite, despite the trappings that might suggest otherwise. Uh, Marvel's Avengers continues to be a thing. There's uh, some stuff about um, Hawkeye's DLC. Um, I guess I'll click into this, whatever. Some Hawkeye DLC stuff that if I didn't know the game was trash, I might have forgotten to look at it. Um, Hawkeye gameplay, some weird Hulk is the master of the universe uh, uh, for some reason. Then they kind of just dropped that uh, Black Panther will be coming at some stage. Um, I skipped too far. That trailer's too slow or too small. Too short. Words. English. It's early on a Sunday, guys. Give me a break. Anyway, uh, no sign of Spider Man, who should have been there by now for PlayStation. Well, we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. Industry bullshit has yet to come up. Tomb Raider celebrating its twenty fifth anniversary with a bunch of crap. Uh, they've got a Fortnite crossover thing. <laughs> They're selling a cookbook. There's uh, the new film, the sequel to Alicia Vikander's one, is going to begin filming. Um, the Survivor Trilogy is coming out. 
I mean, I think it's been on PS Plus and Game Pass and a bunch of other things at this stage. If you don't have it, somehow, yeah, get it now, I guess. They shot off a bunch of mobile titles and I'm not going to click into because they're not gameplay. They're just cinematics of Just Cause. I have no idea how the game itself plays. Um, they showed off... They didn't even show off a Space Invaders thing, just that there is a Space Invaders AR thing coming up. And that's kind of it. Generally unimpressive other than Forspoken. And even then, um, we've no idea when it's coming out or anything like that. So... Who cares? Sony also showed off a couple of indie titles. Um, they were just gradually just pumping them out on their PS blog uh, during the week. Um, oh, this is not YouTube. This is going to be a horrible trailer. Or it's going to be a horrible video codec, isn't it? Fucking Game Informer. Anyway. Um, Operation Tango is a cooperative um, spy game, kind of, where one of you plays a hacker, spy, agent, whatever, and the other one plays a more wet works, kind of getting dirty, stealthy guy or girl. I'm not sure which is which. Um, it looks fun, but again, you need... It, it takes two to Operation Tango. So you're going to need to find a friend. Uh, Chikori... Um, a colorful tale sounds, um, it looks like a kind of adventure title with lots of drawing. It reminds me a lot of Epic Mickey. <laughs> um, how good it'll be? I don't know. The art style looks nice and the dog character is pretty cute. I do like their I'm pissed off face. I think it's kind of funny. Um, fuck you, Game Informer's codec. Why can't you just use YouTube? Uh, pause. Nor uh, play with your food. It looks like uh, a game in like or play in in like the like the very fundamental style of thing. There doesn't appear to be much of a um, what's the word plan, I guess, for what you do with the game. It just sort of. You just play with it. You play music to your food, and your food does things. That's that's kind of it. Night mode, I think, is just, uh, we'll tone down the audio a little. That's about it. Where the Heart Leads was shown off before, um, it is a um, kind of adventure style. Why won't you play? Fuck's sake, I'm never using Game Informer again. I <laughs> only use YouTube embeds. This is why YouTube has no fucking competition because every other codec is trash. Um, but this is, you follow the story of this guy and you can make a lot of different decisions that can change the way his life plays out and like actually change, not the choose your own adventure thing where everything just goes to the same point eventually. Like there are actual changes uh, that can come up. You can decide to move house or try to do up the house and it'll like gradually change things if you have kids if you don't have kids that kind of thing um it just looked very interesting i'd be curious to see how actually change changeative that's not a word but you know what i mean <laughs> how much it actually changes this is a psvr title looks a lot like those kind of if you might remember like these kind of 3d puzzles that you get in a box like a 3d pieces where you have to stitch things together to form like a sculpture only google maps <laughs> i guess i doubt it's actually google maps i'm sure it's some other mapping platform but like sticking things together in vr it's always hard to tell like how vr games feel because when you see them flat like this they're not very inspiring but it's it's very different when you're actually playing but yeah this looks like a, like a chill puzzle game if you don't have the time and or money to go out and buy those 3d sculpture puzzles 3d jigsaws um you could just you could just get this and maybe you have the money to buy a psvr headset that's on its way out because they've announced the psvr too don't don't think about it too much heavenly bodies looks uh, like ridiculous um physics nonsense that it should be fun you are astronaut and or two astronauts out in space you have control of your arms, more or less. Arms and legs, not your body. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, for grabbing, for moving. 
uh, and you can grab different things and move about the place. You're obviously in zero gravity, so having control of your body isn't super important because you're just sort of going to float all over the place. Um, the trailer is actually really funny. Um, if you get a chance to, wa to watch the whole thing, I would, because it's quite funny. And that was that. Um, out of them, probably Heavenly Bodies. I'll probably give a shot. Um, if this comes to the new PSVR or it comes to Oculus or something, I'll have a look at it. Where the heart leads, I'll probably play. Nor play with your food. I don't. I don't know who it's for. Cheekery, I'll probably play. Operation Tango, if I can get somebody to play with me, I'll have a look. And then outside of kind of formal um, Nintendo Direct kind of things, um, there were some other trailers. So this is uh, Necromunda Hired Gun, which kind of looks like Warhammer 40k and Doom together. I'll skip ahead because there's a lot of just CG shit and then some gameplay. So yeah, it looks very Doom with wall running. Oh, a bit Titanfall as well, without the Titan. Uh, it, it looks good. I mean, I've, I've been kind of fine try, trying to think of a reason to get into Warhammer that isn't the actual Warhammer game itself, because expensive, and I'm already pretty deep into D&D &D at this stage. But um, the other Warhammer games I've seen have not looked particularly great, but this one looks, this one looks fun. So I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. This is a game called Severed Steel, and you are, again, it's another first-person shooter, but you are playing a character who only has one arm, and they can't reload, because, because you know, um, it would take too long, so they just kind of throw the gun away, uh, which is a very funny excuse to keep people just <laughs> going after guns all the time. Uh, there's a lot of parkour, bullet time, kind of jumping over people all over the place. It looks, it looks fun. Um... I wonder, can I spot the, the bit that looked hilarious? Is it here? Yeah, it's here. Look, jump over the guy with the shield and shoot him in the head. That's brilliant. There's no way I'll ever pull it off in the game, but it, it was hilarious. And then Grime is a kind of Castlevania, Metroidvania kind of thing. There's a guy here. Uh, I'm not going to try to pr um, pronounce his name, but he goes through kind of how the game works. Um, it's a bit plodding, it's a bit um, heavy on the combat more so than like Metroid would have been with the shoot, would just shoot things, but it looks interesting. You have a black hole on your head, so you can use somewhat the, the, the properties of a black hole, namely eat everything. Um, killing enemies absorbs their experience, I imagine, is what it probably turns out to be. Um, you can um, parry enemies at the last minute and you can just absorb them straight into the black hole head and you can reflect um, objects back at them so you can like pull in an object that they've thrown at you with the black hole and then fire it straight back at them as you saw that bit of the parry thing there is there the projectile thing it's, I think it's here yeah and he just and he just head puts it back at you <laughs> brilliant um, yeah I'm looking forward to playing to playing grime I'm just hoping it's not PC only because this is on Rock Paper Shotgun, who tend to only do PC stuff. Does it say? It does not say. So hopefully it's not just PC. It's on um, consoles, because I don't really play PC that much. So, I was going to say some stuff about Spider-Man, and here it is. It's kind of straightforward. He's delayed. Uh, he'll be delayed until 2022 at some stage. He's supposed to be out now, more or less. Like Hawkeye was probably supposed to be a bit earlier, so it's probably supposed to be Spider-Man in and around now. Crystal Dynamics have their content roadmap for 2021. Spider-Man is not anywhere on that, so he's not going to be there until early 2022, which is, like, I don't care because I don't play this game, but people would have bought specifically the PlayStation version because Spider-Man was meant to be on it, and he hasn't, like, when did the game come out? Last year? 2020? 2022 before you'll actually see him? Like, what the fuck? The game is already dying. And <laughs> like you're taking this long. And this quote that I didn't highlight for some reason. There are people working on him and we still fully expect Spider-Man to come to PlayStation. Like you advertised it before he was even ready. I think like most people probably expected that he was like a day one thing, right? But clearly not. Clearly they hadn't even started working on him at that point. So that's... 
That's a bad luck for you guys. Uh, Gotham Knights has been delayed. Remember Gotham Knights? No? Okay, I'll help you out. Um, Gotham Knights is by the guys who did Arkham Origins. E.g. The, the bad Arkham game. That isn't bad, it's just not even remotely close to as good as the other Arkham games. Gameplay, 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 gameplay. No, I haven't looked at this trailer, so I don't actually know if there's any gameplay in it. Maybe. Anyway, you play as the the other Bat family characters, Batgirl, Robin, um, Red Robin, Nightwing, those characters. Um, it's like a four-player, potentially co-op kind of thing. Not super interested in Arkham games that don't involve Batman, but there you go. Anyway, it's delayed. <laughs> it's coming out next year, maybe. some Sometime in 2022. Um, we are giving the game more time to deliver the best possible experience for players. You know what would you know what would give them just not this game just any other game really just let it go um and then no mention of how this will affect rocksteady's um next game rocksteady of course being the developer behind the the good arkham games uh who are doing suicide squad killed the justice league another game that because it's rocksteady i am interested in it but i really don't want the premise like i don't want i don't want to kill the justice league i want to play as the justice league like, the Suicide God is kind of boring, powers-wise. There's just guns. Yawn. I'd rather be fucking, like, Superman. Anyway. Um, Sony co-buys fighting game tournament EVO, so they bought it with RTS, who are um, part of Endeavor. It's an eSports, eSports, you guys. Um, terms of the deal not disclosed. So this kind of big deal. Um, so if you're not familiar, Evo is a big fighting game tournament, huge, huge fighting game tournament that gave us such scenes as this, uh, ridiculousness, skip. So this is, a um, uh, Daigo versus Justin, Justin Wong. And this is an incredible moment here where, um, is it, it must be this one. Anyway. Where he manages to parry like a full combo and then just annihilates the fight here. That's here. Like he parries the whole thing. This is in uh, Street Fighter 3, which is um, requires you to parry every single individual attack. So it is nuts. And the audio on this video is incredible. It, it, it's brilliant. But anyway, that's Evo. And having Sony attached to it as possible owners, they kind of, Evo were kind of looking for somebody to buy because they've had like some really horrible toxic shit going on in the last couple of years um and I had to cancel it last year just because a bunch of people pulled out because they didn't want to be part of it because of it so anyway um sony own it now but no mention of what's going to happen to um fighting games that don't appear on playstation so namely uh super smash bros but there's other things like killer instinct is, is microsoft you know that's will that appear on evo Mark Julio has pointed out to say, this is his um, tweet basically to say that um, they're not gonna change, it's open to all platforms, yada, yada, yada. Who knows if that will keep going? We'll find out in August at some stage when EVO this year kicks off. We'll see if Super Smash Bros is there. Sony, in their statement, just mentioned that these games would be there, Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, Mortal Kombat 11, Guilty Gear Strive, which are all PlayStation. Not exclusives, but PlayStation games. They appear. And eh, Guilty Gear Strive is? I think. Not sure. Anyway. Um, play at Home. So Sony's initiative for quarantined people. And the Play at Home thing. You may have remember that Ratchet & Clank was free last month. Um, so they are opening it up again. Not last month. This month. Fuck. Time. Jesus. Anyway. They're adding these games as of next week. March 25th. Um, Res Infinite. Great game. Abzu, great game. The Witness, weird game, but still good. Enter the Gungeon, amazing. Subnautica, haven't played. Don't know. Moss, also really good. Astrobot, yep. Paper Beast, haven't played. Thumper, amazing. These are all really great games. The last four are VR titles, so obviously if you don't have PSVR, you're not going to be able to play them. But the top five, at least four of them, really good. Don't know about Subnautica, haven't played it. Heard good things. Um, the other thing mentioned is that uh, Horizon Zero Dawn will also be free in the middle of April. So, also a really good game. So, some good shit coming out of that play at home thing. Keep an eye on it. 
Um, some news just later on this week, uh, Jade Raymond is opening a new studio again called uh, Haven Studios to be a haven for developers. Gross. Anyway, I mean, appreciate it, but also gross. <laughs> this is just, that's it. That's the news. She's opening a new studio. They're, they're working on an IP exclusive for PS5. It's going to be backed by PlayStation. That's why it's on the PlayStation blog. Um, I just kind of find it strange. Uh, not strange, but strange, I suppose. Kind of funny. Jade Raymond has gone from EA, where they cancelled her game, to Google Stadia, where they can't, they can't, they canceled the whole fucking development uh, branch, and now she's gone to PlayStation, where hopefully she might actually get a game out. Uh, when was the last time Jade Raymond got a game out? It's just shitty. Anyway. Some more news about PSVR 2 or whatever um, Sony end up calling it. So they have shown off the controllers. Here's a picture of them. Um, they go into a bit more detail, some different pictures. You can see that they look very like the Oculus Quest controllers, which I have here. They look kind of, they look a little bit like them. They've got the same haptic stuff, um, not haptics, but the same uh, finger touch detection. So um, the Oculus controller can tell which finger you have or not, sorry. It can't tell what finger you have, but it can tell if you are, if your finger is just touching the button or actually pressing it down. Um, so in that way, it can tell if you're gripping and that kind of thing. Um, they go into a bit of detail here. Adaptive triggers, which are the PS5's DualSense triggers that have that have actual sort of um, resistance sometimes. Haptic feedback, again, is the kind of more nuanced rumble. Finger touch detection is, again, something from Oculus. Tracking is the one that I'm actually interested in because the old PSVR controller the ps move which is what it was used for it was basically a stick with buttons on it and then a big glowing ball on top and the camera the the, the playstation camera tracked the ball that's how it uh, how it found you um, and then there were gyrometers in the um not gyrometers accelerometers in the controller that could tell which way you were actually holding the controller and that kind of thing um and if you didn't have one of them it tracked the light on the back of the ps4 um dualshock None of that here. There's no lights on it. They're using the ring, um, this ring that goes around your wrist here. They're using that to track it, which is the same thing Oculus uses. Um, so that's good. I'm, I'm glad because the, the, the big blob on top of the controller had some serious tracking issues. You would always have to reset every couple of minutes. It was a big pain in the hole. Um, and also if you ever obscured it from the camera, it would just completely lose sight of you. So if you ever did, I had to turn completely around 180 in the, in the VR scene, it would just freak out and not know what to do. So good. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad they're changing that. Uh, Super Nintendo world officially open. They had their opening ceremony. There's some pictures from it here. Um, also have not watched this video, so. Oh no, that's from the direct, yeah. This is where uh, Shigeru Miyamoto just kind of goes through um, the different areas. It's also a pretty good video um, where they just they just show off what the Nintendo Direct looks like. <laughs> Super Nintendo World looks like. Um, but yeah, it's officially open, but you can't go there because nobody can fucking fly at the moment. Anyway, I guess if you live there, you can. Otherwise, vicariously. And then last thing for these announcements, Gamescom 2021 to be a hybrid event with reduced physical capacity. So why, why, why are you doing this? Why? Pandemic is not going to be gone by the time it, it will not be gone by August. This is, this is a huge mistake. Um, even with their reduced uh, physical uh, capacity, I don't, I don't know who's actually going to attend this in person. I hope they rethink that um, because that will not end well. But that's it. That's that's all that's announced about. Okay, time for everyone's favorite segment, yours and mine. <sighs> Industry fucking bullshit. Okay, so there's actually a couple of news stories here for uh, Activision Blizzard. So they are laying off uh, their esports team. They are also closing a bunch of their European publishing uh, centers pointing out that people are playing digitally all the time now and esports aren't doing well, maybe because you haven't fucking done anything with Overwatch in a billion years or whatever. Anyway, they're laying off a bunch of people, but of course, Bobby Kotick is getting like a 
fucking 50% increase in his salary or something fucking ridiculous. Um, it's pointed out in a different story that I highlighted, but for whatever reason, I decided to close that one. <laughs> but whatever. It's there. It came in. I think it was this report. But they basically go into how Activision Blizzard has been doing actually great in the last couple of years. Um, and for some reason, that means a single person is given a shit ton of money and everyone else gets fired. It's kind of shitty. And not even kind of shitty. It's very, very shitty. Um, this story does go into kind of highlighting of the actual numbers behind things. Um, I just thought this was kind of like one stage, I guess it's like at least they're not just letting them go and saying, fuck you. Like they are giving them severance. They're giving them their salary for 90 days. There's some health benefits. And then a $200 gift card for battle.net, battle, battle which is Blizzard's uh, online store. Fuck you. <laughs> like, you fire me and then, but also spend money on us again. Eat, eat shit, Bobby. Um, so you might remember a couple of weeks ago, there was a story about uh, Nicolo Loran, CEO of Riot, being accused of sexual harassment. But uh, no, no, no evidence. Definitely not. We had uh, we had an external. I don't know why every news story mentions that they're an outside or external law firm. Like who who the fuck has an internal law firm in a game studio? Of course they're going to be external. Stupid. But they sent back a report on like whatever witness testimonies, like various evidence, email that they might have come up across, and they sent it to a board of representatives at Riot, who then decided that there's no evidence. Um, the report itself has not been released to the public to look over or whatever to another law firm completely independent not a law firm known for representing companies in labor negotiations with their employees really really the law firm you you've you've contracted out who who's known for representing the company versus an employee didn't find any didn't find any evidence of wrongdoing by the company by the company owner ceo whatever Hmm, I'm shocked. <sighs> anyway, there's uh, some later things here in the article where it goes up about Riot's history of this sexual <laughs> sexual harassment shit. And the, the idea that there is no evidence is uh, demonstrably false because there are a number of ongoing lawsuits about it. Um, they go highlight here that Riot's decision comes as it seeks to push ongoing litigation with O'Donnell, who was the initial person who brought the sexual lawsuit against Nicolas Laurent, uh, out of court and into arbitration, which is the thing Riot likes to do. It likes to push people into arbitration. 150 Riot employees held a walkout of the company because of this arbitration shit, forced arbitration, which basically means the courts don't get to do anything. You just sit the company down and the employee down, and they have a impartial third person go through, be the arbitrator. They're very rarely impartial. It's almost certainly a company's lawyer doing it. Uh, Wired reported uh, in February that Laurent continued to employ many of the top executives responsible for creating a bro culture at the company. But no, no evidence of, of, of harassment. Definitely not. Um, earlier, not earlier, 2019, Riot reached a preliminary $10 million settlement in the class action lawsuit with the class action lawsuit was about this ongoing culture of sexual harassment. But California state regulators have since argued that the settlement should be closer to $400 million. So guys, you are really fucking up. Uh, and the case remains ongoing. And again, they are trying to, they are trying to rather than have the 150 109, I think it is, people who are involved in this class action lawsuit. Rather than having them go through the courts, they're trying to pull it into forced arbitration. They actually did manage to get it into forced arbitration earlier this year. Um, anyway. Horseshit. So, story from last week, which was the FIFA Ultimate Team card thing, where there was like a black market thing going on where people could just buy the card they wanted oh no how terrible give me the thing i actually want for money not a random bullshit thing anyway ea have come back to basically confirm it appears that one or more ea accounts which are either compromised or being used inappropriately by someone within ea directly entitled items to these individual accounts so shock 
someone at EA was doing it. It was not somebody hacking or whatever, or at least compromised potentially, but more than likely EA employee doing it. The alleged behavior is unacceptable and in no way do we contone, listen now, in no way do we condone granting or purchasing player items in exchange for money, except when they do, except when they give you money to buy these cards in the game. You, you, you clearly do condone. It's just that you weren't getting a cut. That was your problem. Or that they could get the thing they wanted and not a random chance at getting the thing they wanted. We do not allow the trade or sale of items outside our game for many reasons. Chief among them, we didn't get a cut. <laughs> That's it. That's the only reason. The other reason being uh, it, it gives the cards an actual monetary value, which means loot boxes are gambling. So they don't want that. They, they don't want that connection at all because it makes it, that's a big headache for them. Um, the way they get around it at the moment is that they have you convert money into FIFA books or FIFA coins or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and then you use the coins to buy cards. So there's no direct card to money line. It's card to fake money to card. Oh, sorry. It's money to fake money to card and no money to card thing. That's how so many of them are getting around the whole gambling thing because they're not... Um, there's a direct money to fake money thing. There's no gambling involved in that. You know the exchange rate. Everything's fine from a legal standpoint. <laughs> from an ethical standpoint, no, it's not. Um, and then using that to buy loot, loot books or, or loot crates, it's not, um, there's no legal gambling issue there because you're not using real money, even though you use real money to convert it into fake money. The law needs to catch up on that shit. We've also been clear since the creation of Ultimate Team that items cannot be exchanged outside our game. They can, though. Clearly. Because you have a system that an EA employee was able to do where they could give the card to somebody else. The system exists. They did not invent this system. D d no. <laughs> you did it. Uh, this is... Some more FIFA Ultimate stuff. This isn't necessarily news, but this is somebody, it's Goods, Goods TV, on Twitter, um, basically was pointing out how ridiculous um, the whole FIFA Ultimate team is, how much time you would have to spend to do it without money, how much time you would have to spend if you were just using their transfer market, the internal transfer market that EA provide, versus how much money you would have to spend to get your Ultimate team. So he has his Ultimate team here. I don't know anything about football. I assume these are good players. I don't know. Their stats are high, I guess. That's I can go by that. I don't know if they actually reflect the real world person, but whatever. Here's his dream team. It costs 100 million coins. FIFA coins, whatever. 100 million coins. So if he was to play it, if he was to try to get these guys um, without paying any money, just by winning uh, games or that kind of thing, uh, he would have to play 66,666 <laughs> 66, games, assuming a win gives him that, that many coins, yada yada yada. He'd end up having to play 916 full days of uninterrupted gameplay. That's like no sleep, no eating, no shitting, no jerking off, none of that. 916 full days of no job also <laughs> of uninterrupted gameplay. Now, FIFA has a new game every year. And I believe... I could be wrong, again, don't follow this, but I think cards reset, right? If you get if you get the new game, I don't know. Either way, I mean, either way, it's fucking ridiculous. It's three full year, more than three, no. No, less than three years, but almost, <laughs> almost three years, fully of literally just playing the game. That's it, that's all you do. I don't know how you make money or feed yourself or whatever to get this team, ridiculous. If he just does it through trading, um, he goes through a couple of numbers here that I, I will assume are correct. <laughs> Again, don't know anything about the football team, but 69, 69 days, nice, of trading nonstop. That's all he does. Again, it, I mean, better than 916 days, but surely the game that you bought, you would want people to play the game. Surely these should be the, the other way around. No? I mean, it's like, that's still way too many, but whatever. And then, of course, if you could obviously get around this grind by just giving EA money, right? 
Yeah, I mean, you can, but you'd have to give them 79,990 uh, English pounds or 111,000 US dollars in FIFA points or FIFA bucks or coins, whatever the fuck they're called, um, to get them. Okay, I, I don't know about you, I don't have that kind of money. It's just, I just thought this this was interesting. Um, I, again, would have to just assume the numbers are correct. I, do, I wouldn't know enough about the internal workings of FIFA Ultimate Team because gross, uh, just from the gambling standpoint and then also from uh, football, I, d I have no interest. Either way, if it is correct, I am assuming it is, this just highlights how, much, how big of a fucking scam the cards are. Okay, Devotion returns to sale digitally two years after it was delisted. Now, why is this in industry bullshit? Why wasn't this just in announcements or updates or whatever? Good, quest good question. Um, the reason is, um, when Devotion was initially released in 2019, um, it had, as uh, Eurogamer points out, an unflattering reference to China's president, uh, Xi Jinping. Um, basically, there was an art asset that the Devotion devs claim was... A placeholder where Xi Jinping was um, compared to Winnie the Pooh which is a, a, apparently a thing he doesn't like and apparently happens a lot I don't know but it's funny regardless but uh, yeah out, outrage outcry among Chinese players who were like the fuck that's our president or maybe Chinese agents or whatever I don't know it's like whatever either way uh, you know stop making fun of our president um, Devotion got delisted from Weibo, which is a Chinese social media account. Um, it was delisted from Steam in China. Um, and I believe Red Candle themselves uh, delisted it from Steam entirely at that point while they went to work on unspecified fixes, namely probably removing that art asset. Um, but even when they did, it never came back to Steam. Um, it was announced last, late last year, um, yeah, December 2020, that um, it was going to be on GOG, uh, goodoldgames.com, that Devotion was going to return there with, you know, the uh, offending material removed. But um, CD Projekt, who run Good Old Games, um, reversed their decision. Uh, and I do remember that because it was like almost two hours later or something. They said, nah, sorry, not, it's not going to appear. I guess they got uh, more people giving them shit. But either way... Um, Devotion now by Red Candle is going to be sold on their own personal online store, um, DRM free. So you can grab it there instead. And all of their games from now on will be there, which I guess gets them around any kind of political shenanigans and that kind of thing. It's still kind of fucking stupid that it had to happen in the first place. But anyway, if you wanted to get Devotion, which is considered one of the finest horror games of the past decade, don't know, never played it for straight because I couldn't get it <laughs> but um, I guess you can get it now and uh, we'll finish with um, some palate cleansing memory um, or just funny shit I really should give it a new name other than memory because it's not always memes in fact it's rarely memes anyway uh, Genshin Impact and KFC have a collaboration that causes just fucking huge crowds to appear outside of KFC uh, restaurants in China which results in um covid regulations <laughs> having to be triggered so they genshin impact big very popular anime mmo thing that i play a lot far too much to be honest anyway i had a crossover with kfc where you could get um, in-game items for buying kfc meals ordering online or in the restaurant or whatever that wasn't a big issue but the big issue came up when you could get actual physical pins of uh, d look and Noel, which are two characters in the game. Um, and the way to get it was customers had to approach the counter, obviously in person, and say, meet in another world, enjoy delicious food. In English? Or in Mandarin? Or Cantonese? Or one of them, anyway. Very few badges were allocated to each restaurant. <sighs> Idiots. Leading to players camping out overnight to stand a chance of getting their hands on them. That's a big crowd. That's a big crowd for KFC. And you would have to assume, I guess every KFC looked like that at the time. So they would have had to say, okay, yeah, um, coronavirus guys, go home. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's their own, that's their own dumbass mistake. You make this thing that's limited, 
gave very few of them to each restaurant um, uh, for a very popular video game in the region at least you brought that shit on yourselves guys you fucking dumbasses um and then some stories that came out not some stories but some stupid twitter shit that came out from some of the earlier stories so um forespoken got again project athia got its name uh its actual title relieved yeah revealed to be forespoken and then someone mentioned uh when are we going to see the uh, obligatory uh, Photoshop of the Forspoken title to say something else? And they were immediately responded with Foreskin. <laughs> of course, it's hilarious. Um, and then Hard Drive uh, were responding to Activision's laying off people and giving them a gift card to Battle.net to sort of reference a story they did months ago. Um, so. From Jason Schreier, more on today's Activision Blizzard layoff. Dozens of people at the whole company were impacted, not just in live events. In addition to 90 day severance and a year of health benefits, laid off staff to receive $200 Battle.net gift cards um, and hard drive. How did they do something dumber than our old article? Blizzard gives employees box with 8.3% chance of containing a pink slip. Fuck. <laughs> like yeah how how did they how did they somehow make it worse anyway um that was the news for march um 15th to 21st uh let me know what you thought uh some good games or some good um game announcements you don't know if they're going to be good games exactly you can only tell when you've actually played it forspoken looks interesting um that was about it from square enix presents didn't particularly care about the rest of the games that they announced um the sony indie stuff vast majority of them look interesting at least i'd like to see more from them um the three new games that i also highlighted necromunda um severed steel and grime also right like they're right up my alley even though i don't necessarily like shooters but when you do something different or you just have a lot of fun with it i'm tend to be yeah i tend to be all in with that Anyway, um, let, me th bleh, let me know what you thought. If there was anything uh, interesting that stood out to you, did you like Forspoken or Foreskin or <laughs> whatever? Would you have gone to the KFC restaurant and said, meet in a new world? What the fuck was the phrase? Meet in another world, enjoy delicious food. Um, anyway, let me know what you thought. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>